And to our big focus, Sonam Bangchuk from Ladakh is a climate warrior. But not a lone warrior. He's on a 21-day fast, at least 3,000 meters above the sea level. Amid what emerges as a massive outpouring of support from locals. His fast, he claims, is for a promise that BJP has failed to fulfill. A promise that BJP made twice since 2019. A promise, he claims, gave BJP a landslide in 2019 in Ladakh as well. A promise that he believes still could be fulfilled by them. A promise of statehood and protection under sixth schedule. Now, what is the sixth schedule? The sixth schedule provides for the administration of certain tribal areas as autonomous entities. Administration of certain tribal areas by autonomous district councils that also have powers to make laws in areas like land and forests, among others. The purpose of this provision, which comes under Article 244 of the Constitution, is to safeguard the interests and culture of tribal populations while also providing for their development. For now, the sixth schedule includes administration of tribal areas in states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. It was in 2019 that Ladakh was carved out into Union territory from erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir with the abrogation of Article 370. But since the chance of freedom from 2019 to the mass gatherings of protest, Ladakh is seeing a sea of change. Wangchuk and the locals, backed by visuals of massive support even during working days as he protests. They believe that this special status will give them the ability to safeguard their very sensitive ecology and a way of life that is closely interlinked to it. I'm being joined right now by no one else but Sonam Wangchuk, the climate activist and innovator who's on a hunger protest in Ladakh. Thank you very much, Mr. Sonam Vanchuk, for joining us. My first question, allow me this first question. Why are you and those who are fasting along with you saying that you all are being forced to protest? So, uh, why? The answer is that uh, this is to environmentally safeguard the um, fragile environment of these mountains. Secondly, it's for democracy. People in Ladakh don't have any democratic rights to choose their representatives to make decisions about this place. And thirdly, it has now become a struggle for truth. Because uh, four years ago, we were promised by the current government and the ruling party that Ladakh will be safeguarded under the sixth schedule of the Indian constitution, which is our main demand. And it was more than us. It was them who assured us. In fact, it was twice in the manifesto of the ruling party and they won heavily and people voted mainly for this. You can see by my side their uh, publicity at that time promising that Ladakh would be safeguarded under the six schedule. Uh, after that, they backtracked and yeah, dilly-dallied and finally it came to the end of the tenure and March 4th, they told us, told our leaders that these cannot be done. So democracy through statehood was the demand making Ladakh a full-fledged state, or now we say UT with legislature and safeguarding through six schedule. Neither could be done is what our leaders were told after like umpteen meetings, which resulted in nothing. Sunam Wangchuk, do you see your fast and those who are fasting along with you as a political fast? 
Not really. It's more environmental and truth and justice. Political, because we are asking from a political system to keep their promises. Um, near the elections, why we are doing? Exactly, because elections <coughs> are coming again. We were promised in the previous elections and their term is ending. So when do we demand uh, finally that they must keep their promise. So that's why we are doing it's more than the coming election. It's a remnant of the last election. And this is the only time we can very soon we'll have no standing to demand. And next, we don't know what government will be. And they may not take responsibility for the previous government. So that's why. Doc, Mr. Sonam Vangchuk, how important is this demand for statehood in Schedule 6 for the people of Ladakh? So why is it important for the people of Ladakh to be safeguarded under 6 Schedule? Because Ladakh is a hilly, fragile ecosystem. It's like another planet rather than any place in the planet Earth. So it's very different from rest of India or the world. And it has many sensitive, unique cultures, indigenous tribal cultures. Now, our forefathers were so broad-minded when they were making the Indian constitution in 1950 and so generous that they decided to not only tolerate diversity, but actively encourage diversity. So they kept in the constitution a provision, Article 244, 6 Schedule, which provides autonomous councils to these regions and indigenous people where such indigenous people can send public representatives and they can make laws to govern their own state because it will be difficult for any other people to understand such cultures and uh, ecosystems. Now, because it is there, and 97% of Ladakhi population is indigenous tribal, and normally it is 50% that qualifies. So we over-qualify. And that's why people of Ladakh are demanding that they be safeguarded under this. And not only this, the government had promised it in their election manifestos, not once, twice, in 2019 parliamentary elections and 2020 Hill Council elections in Ladakh, they had promised. So that's why people are all here. Yes. Mr. Vangchuk, I'm trying to understand. Uh, also because we're sitting so far away from where you are. Is this a talk of the town? Are ordinary people talking about this in, in their shops, in the streets? Or is this largely a conversation among those who are politically aware? Okay, let me tell you that this is the only talk of the time. If you remember on 3rd February, to support this demand and democracy, people from all over Ladakh gathered in Leh, 30,000 of them, you must have seen it, 30,000 of them, which is like one third of the population of Leh district, you know, walked to one place to vote with their feet. And even today, this is a weekday, normally people gather at uh, the place where I'm doing this fast, but this in large numbers on Sundays. But today it's a weekday and I'll show you what kind of gathering it has become. Yeah, Behind me, if you see the lady with the red, red cap is 87 years old. And there are many in their 90s. And let me try to show you with my camera flipped uh, the other people here. Okay. So these are the people who have gathered just to join in this fast. Some are on one day fast, some are on three days, four days. Uh, roughly 2,000 people are here 
gathered on a weekday. I don't know how many will gather on the Sunday. This place may not be able to contain them. So this is how much close to people's hearts in Ladakh this issue ha is become. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Wangchuk, for giving us that glimpse. It was so important to understand the kind of context of what you're seeing around, what's happening around you. Just one more thing, Priyanka Gandhi Vadra recently tweeted in your favor, in the favor of Ladakh, the demand for statehood and the sixth schedule. Are you getting the kind of political support that you would have wanted across party lines? Yes, uh, slowly we see that uh, different political parties are expressing their support in Ladakh. They have already always supported, including the BJP, who kept it in the manifesto. So every political party, every region, every religion, all have been supporting. Now, uh, nationally, I heard about Priyanka Gandhi ji supporting and Arvind Kejriwal ji supporting. Um, I thank them very much on behalf of Ladakh, but I wouldn't yet say that BJP is lying. We still hold hope that they will keep their promise. After all, this is a party that, you know, uh, that swears by truth and uh, transparency and builds mandirs for Ram and Ram is the ideals of truth. You know, Ram's ideal would be Ragukul Riti Sada Chali Ai, Pran Jai Par Vachan Na Jai. So Ram would give his life, but not make a promise. So if this is true that they are Ram Bhakts, then I still want to believe that they'll keep their promise. I wouldn't yet call them liars. It'll be some time before I do that. Mr. Vangchuk, why have the talks for statehood or status under Schedule 6 failed? What has the government, their representatives, your elected MP, in fact, the only MP for Ladakh right now is a BJP MP, what are they saying are the reasons that these demands cannot be fulfilled? You've also had meetings with even the Home Minister, uh, uh, P, the representatives of this demand. That's the problem. There is no reason given. They promised in 2020 and after that there was a deafening silence and in a year or so it became almost like a crime to even remind them. Now what people here speculate and leaders of opposition have clearly said is that it can it is uh, because of pressures from industrial lobbies, mining lobbies, business lobbies who do not want to keep Ladakh unpro uh, uh, protected. They want it unprotected, unsafe guards guarded so that they can do their business here. They can mine the mountains of Ladakh. They can, you know, take huge chunks of land. Already a solar plant is taking prime pastures of the nomadic uh, Changpa, Mm, mm, shepherds who produce world's finest pashmina fiber. So people are losing land left, right and center. So therefore, to keep it this way, uh, because of the pressures, uh, government might be, you know, doubtful about their keeping their promises. And now the philosophy behind why we are doing this and why we are making noises is that, like in physics, they say you need an equal and opposite force. So to equal and neutralize this pressure from the industrial lobbies, we have to make at least an equal and opposite noise. Otherwise, they'll buckle under these pressures. But if our voice is strong enough, then they will make a balanced decision. So that's why we consider it our duty to make this noise and uh, make the government make a balanced, good decision. 
Mr. Sonam Vangchuk, thank you so much for joining us, for bringing us this very, very important perspective, for being a very important voice from Ladakh. We wish you and everyone in Ladakh the very best. I, through your media channel, uh, want to appeal to the whole nation to support Ladakh because it's not just about Ladakh. It's about the nation. Even the glaciers here are supporting the whole of North India. One billion people depend on the glaciers of the Himalayas. Secondly, it's about truth. And it's about a sensitive, you know, strategic area like Ladakh. If people of Ladakh are alienated this way, it will directly affect the security of the nation. So you are as much a part of it as we in Ladakh are. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Jai Hind, thank you very much, Mr. Vangchuk. That was Sonam Vangchuk who joined us. He's on his hunger protest, along with several others who have joined them. We're trying to understand what is the context around what's happening in Ladakh, a very strategic part of India, a very sensitive, ecologi eco ecologically sensitive area. I'm being joined by Aris Patania, who's a spokesperson for BJP. Kamruz Manchaudhri, who's a political analyst, as well as Virag Gupta, who's a constitutional expert. Thank you, all three of you, for joining us. Aris Patania, to you first. Um, I'm, I'm, I do hope that you heard Mr. Sonam Vagchuk speak. He's been very clear. He's given us two specific instances when BJP has promised them very specific promises of, one, statehood, and two, protection under the sixth schedule. We have the visuals of that as well. We have the posters of that and also uh, the, the explicit photographs of all of them. Now, what is the problem? Why can't this be done? They have, uh, first of all, a, a great gratitude to me that now that you have done a story on Ladakh. And this story should try to put the inside outside. So everything should come out directly to the fore. First of all, Bharatiya Janata Party has a very, very clear and a specific uh, viewpoint with regard to the ongoing stir in Ladakh. Bharat Sarkar, the government of India, has constituted a high-powered committee led by Mr. Nityanand Rai, which has already taken care of the various demands based on their individual merit. I also uh, was an MLA in 2014 Assembly, and my four counterparts from Ladakh were also part of it. I still remember, till still... Uh, during during my school days also, that there was a front which was called the Ladakh Union Territory Front. Mr. Thopson Chewang was leading it. We were uh, school children and we saw that Ladakh is protesting for Union Territory. Then one fine day, Nitin Gadkari ji goes in 2014 polls and he says, if Bharatiya Janata Party comes to power, we will give it a full-fledged Union Territory. So it was a part of Bharatiya Janata Party manifesto also. Once on 5th of August 2019, Bharatiya Janata Party and Kendra Sargar fulfilled its promise. And ultimately, Ladakh was converted into a full-fledged union territory. Though, I think Ladakh might be, if not... With the abrogation of three, uh, Article 370 with, the, with JNK, with that the, automatically happened with Ladakh as well, correct? Uh, yes, one part. One part we already fulfilled. Ladakh, I think, it has a member parliament. I think, if not the lowest, one of the lowest electorates in the entire country, it has one member parliament. It has four MLAs. I think it's four MLAs are having minimum electorate in the entire Jammu and Kashmir also. They were MLAs on 20,000, 22,000. And in Jammu and Kashmir, there was an average Fair MLA enough. for 1 lakh, 1 lakh 10, 1 lakh 20, 1 lakh 50, 60 also. We have due respect and dignity for the people of Ladakh. Their demand for protection of the ecology and their specific and distinct culture, we respect that also. They are marking protection for the lands and jobs, Bharat Sarkar has said that we will engage, we will try to locate some formula. Now, another demand with regard to sixth schedule. Let me be very clear and categoric. There is a seesaw battle across the country that the northeastern states, they are being governed by sixth schedule and the scheduled areas and scheduled tribe areas of the rest of the country, they are being governed by the fifth schedule. Now, there is a seesaw battle. Six schedules, no, but not, not, schedule, not all northeast areas are governed by the schedule. six schedule. Just to clarify this for our viewers, yes, 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 Neha. Six schedule under six schedule, there is a specific provision for creation 
particular autonomous districts and regions which have separate legislative and executive and even judicial powers to these districts also. Mr. But Pratania, if you schedule, could wrap, uh, make your introductory a, comments in 30-40 seconds very next because I have to there's go to a, others as well for the introductory remarks. A, under fifth, under fifth schedule, there is a tribal advisory council which has a constitutional status. And in my opinion, that tribal advisory council has greater power, may it be executive, may it be administrative, as compared to the regional council under the sixth schedule. Now, this is how okay. better six people, those have been granted sixth schedule, they say we want fifth schedule. Those who have been given fifth schedule, they say we, have, we need to want for sixth schedule. Now, this dear Ladakh, with four MLAs and one member of parliament, they want a separate state rule. We respect that also. We are ready to go into it. Kamruzman Chaudhary, how do you look at what's happening in Ladakh? The demand for sixth schedule, protection, special provision under sixth schedule, um, as well as statehood, the promises which have been repeatedly made by BJP. But of course, this is a much deep-rooted issue. It's, it's as Mr. Sonam Wangchuk is saying, this is... It's for democracy, their ability to be, able, to be able to make decisions for themselves. How do you look at that? Good evening. First and foremost, you know, the BJP finds itself in a, between a rock and a hard place with regards to Ladakh, Leh and Kargil areas. Yeah, this is a classic example of where Modika guarantee has failed. Uh, basically, you, you promise the world to them where you are not able to deliver. And Ladakh is one such example. Their simple demand, we can sum up from Mr. Wangchuk interview was, we need the six schedule protection and we need a uh, legislature for our people to, to legislate our, our rules, regulations and protect the environment of our, uh, of our region. That is the only demand that these people are having. If you can't promise them a state, give them a union territory with a legislature, you, why are you really dealing on that? I can't understand. You are, they are demanding a six schedule protection uh, for Ladakh. You can't. Because the simple reason out here, BJP in its myopic policies towards Jammu and Kashmir, in their resolve to withdraw the Article 370 and Article 335A from Jammu and Kashmir, have made all these tribal dominated areas like uh, orphans out here. Nobody to care for. The, you promise something, it's time to deliver, you better deliver. Virag Gupta, let me come to you. Virag Gupta, could you try and explain this to us and to our viewers? What is the sixth schedule in a very layman's term? Constitutionally, how does one decide who gets administered under sixth schedule? Is there a particular ground under which that happens? Or is there a committee that needs to look into it? How is this implemented? Considering there are states that are being given the autonomy under Schedule 6 and there are others like Ladakh that are demanding for it. Sneha, there are three types of demand and accordingly we can consider the aspect of 6th Schedule. The first is the protection that is regarding the land, job and the uh, culture that is the first second is the self government uh, governance and third is the border state with ecological uh, their importance now uh, when this uh, both the states were formed so jammu and kashmir has the separate uh, their own uh, legislative assembly but ladakh has they don't have and uh, uh, two options are there one is the article 371 which the government is considering for that uh, government may have to do the constitutional amendment and the problem may be there because 370 was abrogated on the basis of that is a temporary provision in the part 21 and in the same manner 371 provisions are the temporary but it's difficult to implement because for that purpose government may have to the constitutional amendment and those provisions may not fulfill the aspirations of the Ladakhi people. Now coming to the sixth schedule, for the sixth schedule mm -hmm. no constitutional amendment may be required and for that purpose in the act which was passed mm -hmm. in the 2019, in that act itself provisions may be made for the sixth schedule. But problem is that if the sixth schedule protection is given there, then the similar demand may be there from the adjoining state of the Jammu Kashmir. That is the one thing. Now, secondly, uh, 
इन द सिक्स शेड्यूल लोकल एस्पिरेशंस मे बी फुलफिल्ड इन मैनी आस्पेक्ट्स दे विल गेट द फाइनेंशियल इंडिपेंडेंस टू रिकवर द टैक्सेज दे कैन यूज दैट फंड फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ स्कूल हॉस्पिटल्स एंड अदर थिंग्स दे विल हैव देयर ओन लॉज रिगार्डिंग द फैमिली लॉज फॉर विच वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द यू सी एंड अदर थिंग्स सो दे वी कैन हैव देयर ओन लॉज रिलेटिंग टू द लैंड कल्चर एंड द फैमिली लॉज एट्सेट्रा सो फॉर दैट पर्पज in the as per the six schedule what type of uh, autonomy is given and uh, there will be a big say of the governor that what type of uh, uh, these district councils will use those powers so i think six schedule can be better options for that purpose they will get the more autonomy and it's easy to implement through the legislative process but how it can be done why it should be done because we have to consider that out of 1.6 lakhs square kilometer area of the ladakh almost only 60000 is within our control and the remaining portion is in the pakistan and the china so this is a border state and that is a political call depending on the security uh, whole scenario of the area accordingly government has to take a call but uh, from the constitutional point of view and the big thing is that uh, sooner these uh, elections will be notified so in this period i don't think that as per the model code of conduct government can even issue any ordinance also for this purpose so new government has to uh, take any call but in this election period this uh, demand may be there so that they can get a commitment so that new government can implement their commitment as per the uh, after the formation of the new uh, parliament i think one thing that is very key and this conversation could just go on but with what sonam wangchuk has decided what the people of ladakh are doing currently it's a protest that's th- that is forcing people to take note of the promises that were made to them and the demands of ladakh as uh, there are some who have said it's a very small part of india but we all know it's a very significant part of india it may not have that number of votes but in election in democracy every vote counts hopefully we will see this addressed really soon for now the protest by sonam wangchuk and scores of other people who are joining him every day is garnering headlines is gaining a lot of political momentum as well. Aris Patania and Kamruz Manchodri, thank you very much both of you for joining us.